Welcome. This is Gary Salton, Chief of R&D and Creator of IOP Technology. This video contrasts corporate and city management. On the face of it, they should be different. City management sees their customers every day, face to face. Corporate management sees their customers as numbers on a report. City actions are scrutinized daily in newspapers, blogs, and on TV. Corporations operate in a scripted, predictable environment. Their scrutiny is confined to quarterly and annual reports and perhaps an occasional conference call. And finally, corporate employees are seen as better paid while city jobs are seen as more secure. There are a lot of reasons why cities and corporations might attract and retain different kinds of executives. So, do they? To find out, we used a sample of 175 executives from 19 cities in 10 different states. The city populations range from about 800 to over 750,000 people, with an average city size of about 129,000. The midpoint was 73,900 people. This sample population is roughly representative of the larger cities in the United States. The corporate sample was 4,963 executives from 882 for-profit firms and covered all levels and functions. These research samples are large and diverse and can be seen as reasonably representative. The findings of this study can probably be relied upon. So, let's examine the executive levels of both groups, corporations and cities. This plot contrasts city and corporate executives. You can only see the difference because of the scaling of the graphic. Nothing rises to anything resembling a level of academic significance. The biggest differences are only 1.6 and 1.7 percentage points. It looks like city and corporate executives are mere images of each other. But let's look a little deeper. This chart compares the strength, or degree of commitment, to the various IOP styles of both sets of executives. The left side shows where corporate executives have a greater commitment to a style than do city leaders. The right side shows where city executives surpass their corporate counterparts. The bars on the chart are stacked from low to high. It is instantly clear that city executives excel their corporate counterparts at both the high and low strength levels. That means cities are going to be dealing with some pretty serious people on both sides of an issue. Corporate executives cluster in the middle strength levels of all of the IOP categories. Agreeing on a course of action is likely to be easier among moderately committed people. But before we get carried away, let's make sure that these are not just chance variations. When we test the data sets, the two action-based IOP styles, reactive stimulator and logical processor, drop out. Statistics tell us that these differences can be just random variations. Both city and corporations seem to actually do things in about the same way. However, the differences in the idea-generating RI and analytical HA strategies are statistically significant. And these are the strategies used to make the decisions on just what is to be done. City executives are more highly committed to new ideas and approaches than are their moderately committed corporate counterparts. Cities also dominate in the proportion of executives with a low idea inclination. These people may temper the number of new ideas and options, but they are unlikely to win out in the end. What this means is that cities are likely to have a lot of ideas to work through. And they're going to have to overcome a bit of tension, both from people sponsoring competing ideas and from those who are less inclined toward any new ideas at all. It is a different story for corporations. Proportionately, they are committed to a moderate level of idea generation. This means that they are going to have fewer options to work through. Organizationally, things are simpler and are likely to move much more smoothly. And that's not the end of the story. Competing ideas have to be analyzed to settle on a common approach. And once again, the city executive's inclination is to analyze more and analyze both deeper and wider. And also, once again, 
cities have comparatively more people disinclined toward any analysis at all. What this means is that the contest within cities extends beyond just competing ideas. It now involves just how those ideas are to be sorted out to get to a decision. So, what's the upshot of all this number crunching? Well, for one thing, cities appear to have a tougher row to hold than their corporate counterparts. Corporations will always look better. They have proportionately fewer ideas and do shallower analysis. But the ideas they do have are made visible faster. It looks to all the world like they are the big idea generators. In addition, corporations get to bury their mistakes. City executives get their mistakes broadcast on the evening news. So, what do our discoveries mean in terms of improving city performance? Well, investments targeted at improving organizational functioning will have a higher return for cities than they will for corporations. There is just more opportunity. The volume of ideas can be focused and the degree of analysis can be controlled. Simple methods brought systematically to bear can produce big dividends. However, remember that this research is based on an overall average from 19 cities in 10 different states. Any particular group within a city can vary from this average. Generic, one-size-fits-all methods will probably help. However, an IOP diagnostic of each team will allow a city to optimize each and every group. The IOP diagnosis starts with an executive summary. It is an accurate and succinct statement of the strengths and vulnerabilities of a particular group. This makes grasping the overall team condition easy for all involved. A section of specific recommendations follows. If a team varies from the average outlined in this research, IOP will catch it and adjust its recommendations accordingly. Finally, the strong analytical types that characterize city executive staffs are unlikely to take anything on faith. IOP provides detailed charts, graphs, and tables showing exactly how its recommendations were arrived at. Nothing has to be taken on faith. The design and content of IOP technology helps ensure that it will be used, not just discussed, and it is this action that will provide the return to the city. So, let's summarize what we have found out. City executives tend to be more muscle-bound than their corporate counterparts, both in idea generation and in analysis. Cities may also experience more of a contest between competing ideas. There are just more of them. This is likely to be compounded by those who hold radically different views on the way to approach new issues. The result is that cities will tend to take more time and use more resources in setting a course of action than will corporations. The remedy for this condition is organizational. The horsepower is already at hand, and it is substantial. All that is needed are mechanisms to help guide and coordinate the city's executive power toward its municipal objectives. Thank you for viewing this video. If you want more information, please visit our websites at IOP.com or OEinstitute.org. Both sites have much more information on the many reports, analysis, studies, and support tools available with IOP technology. Thank you again.